glory to God today. Y'all can see that I must be do something on this week, but not just on this week, on this month today. And certainly I give God the praise today for bringing me out. Not just me, but bringing me out.
for righteousness sake. For there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you and falsely for my sake. Verse number 12. Rejoice! Rejoice! Lift your hands!
done so much for me, Reverend Lynn. I cannot tell it all. So sometimes it only comes through in a shout. Sometimes it has to come through in a prayer dance. But we must acknowledge the power of God. But this is the key. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sister John, hear it? In the name of Jesus. Deliverance in the name of Jesus. Joy in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I say, God is a good God. Can I get an amen? amen? It is so. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. I want to use something this morning. Don't plan on being before you too long. I know I always say that. But don't hold it against me. The Lord knows I'm trying. But I want to use something this morning. There's no substitute for the name of Jesus. No substitute. No substitute. Thank you, Brother David. Thank you, Brother Cameron. Amen. There's no substitute. How many know what a substitute is? <laughs> a substitute is something that takes the place of that which is real. They got all kinds of substitutes. They got substitute sugar, substitute this for whatever reason that it might be. Amen. But it's nothing like the real thing. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. I remember going to school and, and the, the, maybe the real teacher would get sick or something and had to be out for a moment. And they said, they made an announcement, tomorrow you guys are going to have a, a substitute teacher. And we would, <laughs> we would get happy. We thought we would feel as so though we could get away with some stuff with the substitute teacher. Uh, she wasn't going to quite be as hard on us as the permanent teacher. Amen. But there's some things you just can't substitute. You just can't uh, take the place. Even when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. Watch this. That's where the power comes in. You see, you just can't pray in anybody's name. It must be in the name of Jesus. That's when things happen. That's when the doors are open. Amen. That's when healing comes forth. Uh, that's when peace is able to flow freely. And we're able to be everything God intended for us to be. Very briefly, I want to go to the book of Acts. The book of Acts. And I want to start at the, uh, the, th the third chapter of Acts. And uh, you know, I'm going to start at that third, well, I'm going to start at the second verse. The second verse. And the Bible reads this way. And a certain man, and when it's a certain man, that means it's a certain man, it's just somebody that it's happened to. A particular man a certain man lame from his mother's womb. He was always, he always had a handicap from his mother's womb. Was carried, uh -huh, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? To ask arms of them that entered into the temple. He needed something. He, is that right? And he couldn't go and put himself there, so uh, he had to have some help. 
Sometimes you just need some help. But they laid this man, amen, at the gate, amen, which is called beautiful. Uh, to have arms of them that entered into the temple. He knew that there would be people coming there. And so who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked in arms, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him, and John said, Look on us. Mm. And he gave he, watch this, this is important. And he gave he. You know, you can instruct somebody to do something, and they can do it or not. But he said, This man gave he. He did what was asked of him unto them, expecting, watch this, to receive something of them. How many came this morning expecting to receive something of the Lord? Amen. And that's what we should do. We should always have an expectation that God is going to do something for me on today. You see, I think that each day is an important day because whatever you did yesterday or didn't do or whatever happened on yesterday is gone. But today is a brand new day. And we don't know what a day may bring. But in the name of Jesus, we can know that whatever it is, is going to be good. Hallelujah. And he gave heed unto them, expecting. Expect to do it. If you don't expect nothing, chances are, if it did, if something was to happen, you wouldn't even recognize it. You wouldn't even know it. But he came expecting something of okay, him, to receive something of him. Then Peter said, silver and gold, uh, have I none. Watch this. Watch this, uh, saints of God, people of God. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. They gave specific instruction. Now you got to understand, this man was laid at the gate called beautiful on a regular basis. And people were coming and going on a regular basis. But something peculiar happened this time. Jesus, come on now. Jesus, come on now, was in the midst of the atmosphere. And Peter and John, watch this, stay with me. Peter and John had been with Jesus. And they knew what kind of power they had. But all the other times, nothing happened. Watch this. And he said this. And Peter and John were about to enter to the temple as arms of Peter were fastening his eyes upon him. With John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of him. Then Peter said, Silver and gold, I don't have. I don't have any material thing for you. But what I got, I got Jesus for you. And through Jesus, you can receive what you need. Have I none but such that I have, give I thee, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now he described. Jesus specifically. Jesus of Nazareth. There was some other folks named Jesus in those days. But he identified Jesus of Nazareth, our Lord and our Savior, specifically. Now watch this. Now watch this. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and 
body that will substitute what only Jesus can do. Only Jesus, in the name of Jesus, can you have the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. Only in the name of Jesus can you have peace because he is the Prince of Peace. Only in the name of Jesus can you be healed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. In the name of Jesus, can that which is broken be fixed and put back together again. Amen. Only in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, can a lost cause be joyful and every time we get a victory, we praise God in the name of Jesus. Don't ever leave out the name of Jesus. Come on now. Amen. Watch this. Whereby we must be saved. Thirteen verse. Now when they saw, people got to see something. The boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned. Watch this. And ignorant men, in other words, unknowing, they marveled and, and they took knowledge of him. Ask yourself the question, is anybody taking knowledge of me? I know that was hard, a hard saying, but think about it. As a child of God, it's more than just us coming in here on a Sunday morning or wherever you may be or, or uh, come on out here. But is anybody taking knowledge of the God in me? I ain't heard about it saying Is anybody taking knowledge that God is with you? You see, come on now. That God will move through you. But he talked about the boldness of Peter and John. But a lot of us, we, we get a little shy around other folks. We won't even mention the name of Jesus, but that's what the problem is. That's where the acknowledgement of your power source comes from. He says, if you be ashamed of me before me, and he be ashamed of us before his father. Didn't he say it? Come on now. But some of us with secret disciples. Some of us won't say nothing. Come on now. I was going in a quick trip this morning, and if a fellow was sitting out there, and I got out of my car, and I went out, he said, and I ain't said a word to this man, I just spoke to him. He said, sir, please share a prayer for me. I ain't told the man I was going to preach, I ain't told him I was going to preach, I guess I look like I was going to church. I guess I looked the part. And he said, well, you say a prayer for me. I said, sir, sir, I saw you. Come on now. Somebody ought to see you. And know that there's something different about you. Come on now. Uh, you ought to be able to walk into a room when the atmosphere should be able to change. You ever been on somebody's house and there's just a peaceful spirit there? You ever been around certain people that you just enjoy being around them because there's a, there's a, 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 a peace about them? Come on now. And that's what we should this, that desire is to have that. Uh huh. Yes. Come on now. And watch this. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, see, they've been told to hush. When you get to talk about Jesus too much, people don't want to hear all that all the time. You know why? Because the light shines in the dark, but the dark is comprehended in the night. In other words, one way we couldn't overtake it. And you can't see, uh, uh, the dogs can't do nothing with the light. The light comes, the dogs got to get out of here. The dogs got to go, the dogs ain't saying nothing. Come on, I said, when the, when the light comes, uh huh, and we'll see that they uh, were unlearned and ignorant men, they, they, well, they didn't have a bunch of degrees on the wall and all this kind of stuff, they took knowledge of them that they had been what? With Jesus. When you leave here today out of this building, is anybody going to take notice and acknowledge the fact that perhaps you've been with Jesus? Yeah, man, this ain't a whole lot of deep theology or anything, but I want you to understand that something going to take place when you come into the house of God, and whether it be this house or wherever you go, and if you maybe perhaps you pray, maybe perhaps you, you meditate on God, something. 
There ought to be a difference between the clean and the unclean. Yes. If we're a crowd of people, there ought to be something about you that stands out amongst the crowd. I'm not talking about a crowd for weight. I'm talking about a peace that may emanate from you. Mm-hmm. Now watch this. And beholding the man which was healed, standing with him, they, watch it, they could say nothing against it. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us to keep this thing right. It was not to just be a bunch of people coming into the church building on Sunday morning and one way and leaving out the same way. Uh huh. And watch this. Sometimes it even works because you said no. All this counsel. You ain't had no intention of doing the right thing. You can't wait till the service is over because you got some other plans that ain't got nothing to do with God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But I think that as we grow older, as we mature in the Lord, amen, we ought to become more, uh, people ought to acknowledge the fact that, hey, that person is different. That person is something. Uh, if, if any man be in Christ, he's a what kind of creature? He's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now remember now, this is saying, Peter, if, 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 if you didn't realize it, that they not Christ. What's that now? Yes, yes, yes. But he's the same, he's the same Peter. But something happened, he changed. Come on now. He was sorry for his sin. He was sorry that he didn't, he didn't acknowledge that. And God turned around and said, how, how merciful God is. That's how loving God is. Full of grace and mercy. And God turned around and used him in this way. And we need to ask ourselves the question, is God using me in any kind of way? Or am I doing things that I shouldn't do? Am I a Am I, come on now, am I saying one thing and doing something else? Amen. Can, can, can there be a difference? Or we keep walking past the man sitting at the gate? Knowing we have no power. He said, the peace of here, Peter and here, full of the Holy Ghost. Watch out now. What we have, what do we have to offer? It's one thing to say I go to church. Yes. I'm in the Lord. He's the Lord in me. Come on, y'all. The Lord is so quiet in here. Watch this. Now you got to understand, you just got to get out the way and you just got to uh, go in and say, uh, you haters, you just can't pay attention to them because they're going to be there. Watch this. The 15th verse. They said they could do nothing against you. Can we have that kind of power where when we, God moves and God blesses through us, that, that when people see that and they know that God did it, that we can't say nothing against you? What the man is living, what the woman is living, is coming to pass. God is blessing. Can God see you? Can people see you being blessed? Well, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, that that's the only criteria, but I'm saying that somebody ought to see something different in you. Somebody ought to see the presence of the Lord in you. Somebody ought to acknowledge that you've been with the Lord sometime or another. Don't come in here with your head hung down and then leave them out of here with your head still hung down. Watch out now. And then they said this in the 16th verse. What? I'm saying, what shall we do to these men? For they that indeed, for they that indeed a noble miracle have been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. God wants to bless his people. Where it can't be denied. Not that you did it, but that God did it. But what's this? He wants to use us. Come on here. In, in, in the thing to make it happen, God works through people. Always understand that. Now, God just could have came down on any occasion and just healed the man and have been in. But God wants people to know that he wants 
to use us in the plan. Amen. Otherwise, when we first got saved, God would have just took us right over in there. But he left us here, come on now, to be able to use our voice and our hands and our feet, come on now, to extend ourselves to people and let them see no way to see God at any time. But watch this. They see you, Sister Mary. Brother Sir, they see you. They see me, Brother Wayne. Somebody, they see you. But we need to always examine ourselves and, and, be, and realize what do they see? Can they see the Jesus in me? Can they see the Jesus in me? And so when we ask God for something and we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus, God wants us to always give, come on now, the glory to Him. Always, even Jesus, directed everything back to the Father. But if we're not careful, we as men, the nature of the flesh wants to be lifted up. We want to take the credit for that which only God can do. Uh -huh. But you can't show for a substitute. Now I'm going to say something. And I'm almost through. I'm the pastor of the church, been pastor for a little while. But you hear me say this all the time. I'm trying to get us to a point to where we understand and realize that we have not arrived yet. And every day is a new day. And every day we are faced with all types of things. And just because you were on the mountaintop on yesterday, does not mean that you will be on the mountaintop today. But if we have been taking heed and allowing the word of God to take us from faith to faith, faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If we allow ourselves to be built up on our most holy faith, we can reach down inside and say, God, you deliver me from that. And I know that you can deliver me from this. Come on here. Come on now. Come on here. But there's no substitute from the truth. Now the Bible says that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So my point is this, that if we're going to be anything for God, if anybody's going to take notice of us as being a child of God, then we're going to have to walk in truth. And when there's something that's not lining up, we're going to have to face the truth and deal with that. Come on now. And not try to make people think we're this when we're not. And the scripture says in the 12th chapter of Romans, it says, now for men not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Come on now. So unless you know that there's a constant working on ourselves, we're constantly supposed to get better. Philippians tells us that I can do all things through my education. I can do all things through my money in the bank. I can do all things that to be done in the name of Jesus. Always acknowledging as the power source. Always acknowledge him as the one. I can pray for you all I want to. I can lay hands, and that's what a man has done all the time. We've diverted our attention from God to man. Come on here. Thinking that man did this, a man did that. All Peter and John did, come on now, was follow the instruction that they have been given by Jesus. By utilizing the power that they have been endowed with by Jesus. Come on now. Jesus gave them the, the, the ability and the wherewithal to do what they did. And even the church leaders, they acknowledged the fact that they were bold to be straight cats. Come on here. And we put on our suits, we put on our uh, women, we put your, your makeup on and your hair and your nails and 